Okay, here's here's what we're going to do. Nick 10, real quick. Mm -hmm. Hananiga at Boylan, Jefferson at Belvedere, Belvedere North at Auburn, Freeport at Guilford, East at Harlem. We were talking about what games we're going to. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, Hananiga at Boylan is going to be your, your game of the week there. Uh, you know, that, that's the one everybody wants to see. It's it's the next chance to, to end the streak, uh, you know, as they say. Uh, you know, but I, I think that'll be a good game. You know, Hananiga obviously has the heartbreak of last year uh, yeah. with, with that loss that they want to try to, to get that back. But Boylan has, you know, looked, looked very, very good. You know, it's going to be a lot to handle when you get Croft out there, you know, and he gets rolling. And I tell you what, the, the one thing... Uh, you know, the Boylan pass defense, you know, looked shaky in some spots. You know, uh, Auburn receivers dropped a couple passes that would have been sure touchdowns that, you know, again, could have been something that changed the game around. Uh, but the but the Boylan run defense looked really, really well against Auburn. Uh, you know, and, and fortunately for Boylan, that's what Hananigan wants to do is they want to run. You know, they, they've never been a big-time passing school. Uh, you know, so it's one of those things that... You know, who knows what's going to happen next week, but that could very well play into Boylan's hands when you look at it. But I tell you, that, uh, the game that could, in, could end up being more exciting, at least, is that Belvedere-North-Auburn game. That, that, that's, uh, yeah, it was last year, too, because that's when Belvedere-North kind of reared their head and said, hey, we're for real. Exactly. You know, it's a, so you've got, uh, you know, it remains to be seen who's going to win Belvedere-Belvedere-North tonight. Uh, but, but you're at least going to have, you know, I don't want to say a desperate Auburn team, but, you know, that's a team that... You yeah, know, they're going to want to win. If, if they lose their first two <laughs> and you're staring at 0-2, you know, that puts you behind the eight ball when you start talking about playoffs. They'll still have, you know, Harlem, Hananiga that they've got to play. Yep. Guilford's still out there that you got to play. And you got Lopez and Parchman kind of dinged up. You yeah. want to make sure they're back. So. Yeah, exactly. So, I, you know, you're going to have a, a real, real uh, fired-up Auburn team and just an explosive Belvedere North team, you know, it's a very, very good offense. That'll be a fun game to watch. That could be a game where, you you know, especially if Auburn has all their players back next week, that could be a lot of points in that game. Preparing for Belvedere North is kind of like just throwing stuff up in the air and <laughs> something comes down because they are good. You know, yeah. last year they said they had to pass because they needed to. This year they can pass when they want to. That's how they feel. They, well, they've got a very, very good quarterback and some good receivers out there. And, and, and what's scary is they they can beat you in multiple ways. You know, kind of like, uh, you know, Boylan last night. Not to say that uh, their quarterback there, Bankford, is as good as Croft. But, you know, that's another kid that's a, you know, he's getting some Division One looks, yes, things is. like that. Uh, you know, and they can just they they can attack you kind of the same way. They can do the kind of those short passes that they want to, and and try to move some guys around. But they can go down the field and attack you as well. Hit the middle of the field. They they can attack you from a lot of different ways. You know, Freeport and Guilford. If I remember right, Freeport has given Guilford some problems in the past because they have trouble with McShane. Yeah, well, and, and so, who doesn't? Yeah, you know? everybody does. <laughs> and that's the thing is who doesn't? You know, that, that'll that be a fun game to watch, especially if you haven't had a chance to see McShane before. Uh, you, you know, he'll be here in town. You can go go watch him play. So he's a very, very good player. Uh, you know, and, and he is the kind of player. He's getting a lot of D1 looks. He, he sure is. He's, he's, he's the kind of player that, that gives Freeport a chance, you know. Obviously, it didn't work out last year. They're 0-1 so far this year, but... You know, he's the type of player that can take a game over by himself and, and gives them a chance when they're out, out there and gives them a chance to win. And there's another McShane on the roster, too. Yeah. He had a good night. Well, and they've had a too. few yeah. go, go through there, yeah. a few of these McShanes. So they, they've uh, they've got some connections with the McShane family there, and they keep churning them out for them. Every time I would see that on the roster, if I was a Freeport coach, I'd have a big smile on my face. Exactly. East at Harlem. You know, I think uh, Harlem uh, had a pretty good night last night against Freeport. You, you know, that was one of the more impressive wins to me. Uh, you know, they... they, they beat Freeport fairly easily. Uh, you know, for Harlem, that was an interesting game when I was looking at it going into the game. You know, they're starting a sophomore quarterback. They've got some younger players on the field, uh, you know, on the road, you know, in a tough environment. We know Hananiga went there a few years ago and lost. Uh, you, you know, so for them to go into Freeport and really just win fairly easily, that, that was very, very impressive to me. Uh, you know, now East has given them trouble the last couple of years. I know we got a new yeah. coach there with Coach Griffin, uh, but but that's a team that Harlem has struggled with. And, and you know, they're going to be looking ahead to the third week when they've got Boylan coming in, uh, you know, so, you know, they, they've got to be ready. If they, if they look too far ahead, they could get caught up. And Jefferson and Belvedere, you know, uh, Belvedere still has to play tonight, but Jefferson, what I saw last night, I was impressed. There's a new attitude there. Yeah. The kids want to play hard, and they listen real well. I mean, it was it was a good night for Jefferson in, lo in a loss to a really good Guilford team. Yep. Yeah, you know, very, very impressive there. Belvedere, you know, again, see what happens tonight, but, you know, that that's 
a program that's still kind of building up and, and building themselves back up uh, under, under Coach Leonard. I, I think that's another fun game when you look at it that I think could be very, very competitive. You see some points put up in that game. Uh, yeah, you look at that whole slate next week, and uh, ob- obviously the easy game is to say, yeah, let's go to Hananiga Boylan and and uh, and see what happens there. But you look at those other four games, That's those are four you know, potentially fun games that, that I think any, anywhere you go, you, you, can, you can see a fun game. Here's some big northern matchups of interest next week. Genoa Kingston's at Byron. Oregon's at North Boone. Rockford Lutheran at Rockford Christian. Stillman Valley, who took a tough one last mm-hmm. night, lost to Phillips 51-0. to nothing. They'll be at Richmond Burton. And Harvard will be at Winnebago. Winnebago lost a heartbreaker last night. I'll tell you what, uh, Rockford Christian has better pull up the big boy pants because Rockford Lutheran looks pretty awesome. They beat a Quincy Notre Dame team 35-6 to and only played to half. Yeah, only played that. <laughs> and when you talk about Quincy Notre Dame, I mean, that's a team that's made the playoffs, you know, a, a lot of years in a row. I don't remember the exact figure, but you're, you're talking like 13, 15 years in a row, something like that. It's It's something like... 16 or 17 out of the last 20 years they've been in the playoffs. Uh, you know, so it's, it, it's a good team any way you look at it. You know, I, I, I think I heard that they were ranked in the state going in. I heard that might have been somewhat inflated based on their past. Didn't have a lot of returning starters. But still, that's it, impressive for Lutheran to put a team like that away in a, in a half. You know, they, they hit that weather delay at the half, and for the... For both coaches, we'd say, like to go home. Yeah, for them to say, you know what, you know what, we're, we're good at this point. We we know where this is going. Uh, that that's very impressive for Lutheran. It, it, it's going to be a, a night where Robinson can probably uh, get just a little bit closer to that state rushing record. Uh, you, you know, and, and Lutheran looks like a you know if, after one night they look like an overwhelming favorite in that that big Northern West right now. If you're going to that game, I understand they don't have a sophomore team at Christian, so just I think it starts at seven o'clock. You might want to check. Sure, uh, the State Line Sports Hub. We got that information on there. Uh, Oregon at North Boone. North Boone yeah. is one and zero against Wisconsin. This will be their first game against an Illinois <laughs> team. But I know a lot of people I've been hearing and talking to thought North Boone couldn't handle Clinton and Wisconsin. Right. They went last night. They, they went, and you know North Boone's been you know pretty good the last couple of years. They they've stepped up and they've been right there in that big Northern East. Uh, you know, and Oregon's a team that uh, you know they're going to be looking for a big win. You know, because they've got that that tough big Northern West to go through later. So these are the kind of wins they need. Then that's a team that looks like they're improving as well. I think I think that's you know you look at that that big northern slate that might be the best game right there harvard at winnebago looks pretty good as well uh you know but i think that oregon north boone game could be very very good winnebago loses a heartbreaker last yeah. night on the road at pontiac uh, you know i know i know a lot of it was uh, winnebago fans and stuff like that mm-hmm. but it, they all popped it up at the same time there was a late uh, pass interference call that right. gave uh them really good field position, and they score with like 17 seconds to go. So yeah. when you're on the road far away, that'll happen once a Yeah, week. you know, it, it is. Especially if it's on the road, then you feel like the refs have it in for you. <laughs> I haven't seen the play, so I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, you know, if it happened on your home field, you know, still wouldn't be happy about it, but, you know, you'd probably feel like it's one of those things. But, yeah, when you're on the road, you're never too happy about it. Stillman Valley, I don't think I've ever seen uh, them get shut out 51 to nothing since I've been doing stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that that was, uh, you know, it's a good team in Chicago Phillips that they played. You know, let's get that out They're of the way. They're a big city school. Yes, they, yes <laughs> they are. And I want to say they might be even a class or two higher than Stillman Valley. Yeah, they're pretty good size. As well, school, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you know, so so that that's you know that's part of it right there. But still, for for Stillman Valley not to be able to put any points on the board, that's shocking when you when you look at it. That's a matchup of teams that couldn't find first week games. Yeah, and that's usually what happens. And you know, um, yeah, Stillman Valley probably wishes they would have looked a little harder. Yeah, now. That's, that's what he said. He said on the pigskin preview, he said we probably should have checked them a little better. <laughs> but you know, he lost a lot from that state championship. Yeah, he team. did. He so, did. You know, anyway, let's go down to our uh, northeastern conference and our good friend. Uh, Tony Ambrosio, he's a lot of fun, and mm-hmm. they win a big game last night against Audible Marquette. They play Chicago Hope Academy, and uh, yeah, that, he, and that, they they travel. This is this is the this is the true uh, Illinois State Conference because they go everywhere. Yeah, well, and you know, again, that was a maybe one of the most impressive wins last night was Christian Life knocking off Ottawa Marquette. Uh, you know, Ottawa's a team that had won 18 straight in the conference, won the conference the last few years. Uh, you know, that's who Christian Life was was trying to catch, you know. They they gave Ottawa their toughest game last year, but I think they still lost by, you know, 18, 20 points, something like that. They had a nice team last year, yeah. Marquette did. Yeah, they, um. they did. So, I mean, that's... 
that, that those are the two teams everybody said are probably the two best in that conference uh, that everybody was looking at as the, as the favorites. And, and, you know, now Christian Life is, is squarely the favorite. You know, they, they got through that game. They, there's still a few more left out there. I, I know Luther North was a good team that they've gotten a few weeks, and Alden Hebron was a playoff team. Uh, you, you know, so, so there's still some games out there that, uh, you know, that could trip them up. But, uh, yeah, they, they have the bullseye squarely on their back right now as the favorite in that conference. So they're going to have to come out next week against Chicago Hope and, and be ready to play. But I tell you what, they got Brady Pond at quarterback, third-year starter. Nice very, player. Very, very good player. He does a lot for that team. And that will be the first home game, too. In the NUIC Northwest, a big game next week, Dakota at uh, Lena Winslow. Coach uh, Rick Schmitz, he won his first game pretty easy. Also, Forreston's at South Beloit, and Pecatonic is at Eastland Pearl City. Uh, Dakota and Lena Winslow, that's two of your big football schools. Mm-hmm. Always a good matchup. They probably like beating the snot out of each other. And, and that is something that they're going <laughs> to do. That'll be, a, that'll be a very, very good game. And our friends up in Wisconsin, I'll tell you what, Beloit, Schools are just having a real tough season this year. Beloit Memorial will be at Janesville Parker, and Evansville Albany will be at Beloit Turner. I suppose that's a co-op team, Evansville Albany. Yeah, that would be my guess. Yeah. But both schools are having trouble scoring, and they're also having trouble stopping the other team from scoring. Well, no, those are two important things, but I think these this year for both of those teams are just more about building the program up. Yeah, we did that pretty good today, didn't we? Yeah. Hear that music. Thank you, Mark Rudis. Very nice job today. For uh, Matt Nestor, this is Dave <laughs> Schmidt. Say, we'll see you next week on the State Line Sports Hour.